everyone. I wanted to do a quick video today on the proper procedure for clearing uh, your two blank error code. Could be three blanks in your case. Um, it's the error, error code that indicates the pressure switch is reading closed. So it's not necessarily a problem with the pressure switch, but more than likely a condensation built up in your P-trap down there. So I'm going to give you the proper procedure for clearing your P-trap and making sure uh, some other things aren't plugged up before you try to turn it on. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come to your power switch and click it off. Okay, make sure that power switch is off. It's up to you whether or not you want to turn your gas on or off. It's not going to make a big difference. I left mine on. So first things first, coming down to the P-trap, you're going to notice probably some water in here. Maybe there's a lot of water in this tube. Either way, it's going to be plugged up. So go ahead and disconnect from whatever fitting you have. Get a shot back. Simply put the hose over the line. Before you turn your vacuum on, make sure you're disconnecting your vacuum lines from your pressure switch. It can't handle as much vacuum as this is going to put forth through it. Could damage it, so you want to make sure that you take those off. And also make sure you mark them. If you reverse the order, it's not going to ever start for you. So make sure you mark those, take a picture, write it down, whatever. Anyway, um, simply turn the vacuum on, you'll notice water coming out. And I like to make a tighter seal. That way I know I'm getting all the water out. You'll see it, it'll just boom, come through real quick and you know your water's gone. So once you verify that there's no water remaining in the in the uh, P-trap, a good best practice is to take your hose off here and look at this outlet hole and make sure there's nothing blocking it. In my case, I had a bunch of debris back there, um, just growth of some kind. You can see it's kind of a, I haven't cleaned it all up yet, but it was the bottom of the pan. So that caused me a bit of concern. So I went back and made sure nothing else was plugged by removing the fan. Um, all you have to do is there's three uh, screws that come out real easy. Electrical is easy. Just mark it. A clamp right here pulls right out. Not hard at all. You're not going to mess up any tolerances, nothing like that. So don't be afraid to do that. But what it will do is allow you to look into this uh, baffle back here and you can see if there's any debris in there. Uh, I couldn't really see a lot, but I went ahead and took an air hose and just blew it out. And I was able to get more debris coming out and that's going to help me in the future for this problem not to happen again. So uh, put your fan back on, hook up all the electrical. Again, making sure you marked everything where it needs to be. So that's all, all good. Uh, make sure everything's tight. Reconnect your lines here to your pressure switch. Uh, making sure you don't reverse those so now everything should be clear we've taken the water out of the p-trap we've cleared the baffle back here if that's something you need to do you may not now we should be able to fire up the furnace right so go ahead and click your furnace back on now, if your furnace starts, that light is going to remain red. It won't blink anymore. Red steady means everything's working fine. Also, that yellow or amber light will also turn on steady once your, um, uh, oh geez, once your fire starts in there, your, your heating element gets hot, um, once you see a flame inside. So, if you kick it on and it works, wonderful. You've more than likely solved your problem. However, if, you're, if you still see a light blinking and it's not kicking on, you could have to do one more step. That is, um, some of these require um, some condensation uh, in the baffle, in the tubing, whatever, before they start. So they need to be primed. So what you need to do is get some water back in there because we sucked it all out, right? So you're going to remove this hose or whatever hose is on your particular model. And I simply dumped some water down this tube and that allowed it to go in the back of the trap back there into the baffle. And I used a quarter cup of a glass this size. I couldn't tell you, half a cup maybe, maybe a quarter. Maybe a quarter of a cup, I'd say is a good estimate. But dump that down there, let that water go through and uh, hook everything back up and then click your switch on again. And that should solve your problem as far as priming it goes. If you still have that issue, you might have to do the steps all over again. What I mean is, you might have to vacuum out again. You might have dumped too much water in. So vacuum out again, turn it on, see if it works. If it doesn't, reprime it. Uh, maybe decrease the amount of water you put in there. Turn your switch back on. Um, hopefully that does it, but it took me about three tries to get it to turn on. So don't be afraid to redo it. And I would just adjust the amount of water you're putting in, okay? I, uh, you know, you don't want to keep doing the same thing, having the same result. You want to want to change things in order to get a different outcome, right? So, um, 
that's what I would suggest to do there. But that should solve your problem. Hopefully, uh, you know, save yourself a couple hundred bucks from a guy coming down and, and doing that for you. But when I Another preventative measure in this entire uh, business is making sure your lines are clear. There's no mold growing in them or anything like that, bacteria. You can see there's stuff growing in mine. I blew them out and I had a bunch of crud that came out. So that wasn't helping my situation at all. Also, this P-trap needed needs to be adjusted. You can see that it's connecting to this T right here, but it's putting a bend in the pipe, right? This should, you know, this is kind of at an angle down. It's generally, they're, they're pretty uh, horizontal. But you want to make sure there's no bends in the middle of your pipe that would cause, you know, any type of condensation to work its way back. So I'm actually going to replace this hose with a longer one, which will allow the T feeding to come about right here. It'll just give me more of a downward angle. Therefore, I don't have to really worry about water going back in there and, and uh, you know, having this problem happen to you again. So um, that is the proper procedure. Like I said, it might take you a couple times to get it right, but you know, keep at it and hopefully keep the handyman away.